Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome once again to Church Online, another beautiful Wednesday evening here at our Lena First Assembly of God Church. So glad that we can join together this evening. I want to make a couple of announcements. One of them is the TGIF. Thank God it's Friday, 7 o'clock. Every single Friday we have something for everybody in the family, so come and join us and have a great time with us together. I also want to let you know that we have a newcomer's luncheon scheduled for this Sunday, just a few days away, that will take place right after the morning worship service. If you're newer to the church within the past year or so, come and join us. We'd love to have you get to know you a little bit better. It's a very informal time, a complimentary lunch, but we would just love to have you come and join us for that. Also, I want to let you know, if you have not been baptized, baptized in water, uh, let us know. We have a baptismal service that will be coming up. So if you're interested in that, please contact the office and we'll get you scheduled for our class and then letting you know more detail for the baptismal service. So we're excited about that there. Well, this evening I want to just share on really an important subject matter. And it has to do with choices. Choices and commitment. Choices, that's what we what we choose to do. We say, hey, I want to start this job. It's a choice. Or we say, I don't want to do this job. So choices, um, they're pretty easy to make. I think they're pretty, pretty easy to make. What is key, though, is following through with that choice. If it is a choice to begin a new career, then you give it everything you've got to begin that new career, but it's going to take commitment because it doesn't just happen. And so, whenever we talk about commitment, and let me just read a definition from the dictionary. It says, commitment is the act of binding yourself, intellectually or emotionally, to a cause or an action. Now, this is something that, that we know. Your life, who you are, is actually shaped by the choices you make and then the commitment that you've made to those choices that you have made. We become whatever we're committed to. We become all we we become the choices that we make. Because the choices we make is what we're committed to and we follow through with that and it impacts our lives. So you are today, really if you think about it, you are the choices that you have made. And then commitment to those choices have caused you to be what you are today. Well I want to just speak about five choices that you can make. They're practical. They're, uh, they're practical things. Five choices you can make that will help your life to become all that you want it to be and all that God has given you, the promises He's made to you. You can realize the promises of the Lord if you'll make some of these choices. I want to read from uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse number 17. And it says, Anyone... Not just some people, not just some, but anyone who is joined to Christ is a new being. Isn't that great? Anyone who's joined to Christ is a new being. The old is gone, the new has come. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse number 17. So let's, let's think about our choices. Let's also think about our commitments. Because remember, we are what we are committed to. Uh, we are committed to the choices that we make. And so the first one I want to say is this here. Uh, it's a choice. It's a choice. You can choose to be a healthier person. Now this is practical. You can cho choose to be a healthier, healthier person. Well, how do I do that there? Well, you can choose to exercise. Uh, as you know, we've been announcing that the men are going to be going on a backpack trip to... Uh, to the Sierras, Yosemite area. And so what I've been doing personally is I work out every single day. I take a nice long walk, and not an easy one. I find hills to go up. In fact, just this past Sunday after church, after lunch, I got together with some of the folks and we went on a 5.1 mile hike. And it wasn't all like this here. It was mostly like, like this. And then, then when we got to the top of the hill, 
then it was down, but it was a, a very difficult hike. But what, what we're doing right now is just getting prepared. It's a choice. It's a choice we're making to experience some pain right now to really enjoy that backpack trip, to be in shape, for our cardio to be up. So you can choose to be healthier how? Well, you can exercise. You can work at eating better, watching your diet. Those are some things that you can do that will help you. Those choice That's a choice. It's a choice that you're making. And that choice is, hey, I want to be a healthier person. Well, there's some choices you can make. And then when you've made that choice, be committed to it. I made a choice to go on the backpack trip in Yosemite. And so it's a choice I made. Now I'm committed, I'm committed to preparing for that backpack trip. And I'm doing that by exercising, trying to eat better so that I'll be prepared for it. This is what the scripture says in Psalm 119, verse number 73. It says, your hands, God, your hands made me and formed me. Uh, give me understanding to learn your commands. Give me understanding. And so, uh, if you want to be healthier, it's a choice. Um, Terry and I talk about it a lot too. Getting to bed earlier. Eating right. Exercise. Those are some important things. Well, there's another practical thing that you can do. A choice. Again, this is a choice. You can choose to deepen relationships with people. Uh, people from our church fellowship, people in the workplace. Um, I think there's one of the things that keeps us from really developing relationships with, uh, with other people is that sometimes we're just flat out afraid. We're fearful of getting into a relationship. We're fearful of getting into a group of other people because we feel like, well, I just don't maybe have what they have. I you know, I'm not as smart as they are. I don't have, you know, a bank account like they do. I don't try, I mean, we could go on and on and on and on and on. Um, but listen, um, you know, move forward in spite of your fear. Move forward. Ask God to give you courage. Uh, and that's what courage is. Courage is moving forward in spite of your fears. And God will help you with that there. And so I would say, you know, develop choose to develop healthy relationships. And that might mean choosing and being committed to that choice to shedding some of the relationships that maybe you have right now. You might be comfortable in them, but they're not helping you. They're in fact, they're causing there to be temptation in the roadway. And so, you know, making that choice to develop healthy relationships may involve shedding some relationships as well. Let me, uh, let me read this passage of scripture from 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse number 1. It says this here. It says, let love, let love be your highest goal. Let love be your highest goal. And then the third, and these are practical uh, choices that we can make. You can choose to trust God no matter what happens. Choose to trust God no matter what happens. Psalm 34, verse number 1 says this here. I will always, not sometimes, I will always thank the Lord. I will never stop praising Him. And when you get to that point in your life where you can say, God, no matter what happens in my life, I'm going to praise you and I'm going to worship you. And that will give you a confidence for living each day and every day of your life in victory is thanking God no matter what happens. That's a confidence that you can't get down the street in Hollywood. You can't get it on Capitol Hill. You can't even get it at Wall Street. They can't offer you that kind of confidence. And when you get to the place in your life where you can worship and praise God through everything, through everything, uh, you'll have made a choice that will, that will, will offer you tremendous benefits. And your relationship with the Lord will just blossom. And in turn, you're going to also experience the, uh, the blessing and the hand of the Lord in your life like never before. Well, the fourth practical thing we can do is we can choose. We can choose and then be committed to what we think about. What we think about. You know, uh, throughout the 20th century, scientists believe that the adult brain 
couldn't be changed. And that's the way it is. Boom, that's just the way you're going to be. Period. Until 2002, there was a Nobel, Nobel Prize, Peace Prize winner that proved that you can rewire your brain. And as has been in all of history, science is always catching up with the scriptures. God's word. God's word is truth. Romans chapter 12, verse number 2 says, uh, Let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Now, you know folks, and I do too, who have been dynamically, supernaturally changed by the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. People we thought could never change have changed because of the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. And they have made their word, God's word, a part of their life. And as a result of it, they begin to make different choices based on biblical principles. And those choices they make built on biblical principles have been what they are committed to in life. And remember, you are, you are, you're shaped and you're formed by the commitments that you make, by the choices that you make. And then the fifth thing, and we'll close with this tonight, is you can choose Jesus Christ as your Savior. You can choose the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse number 17, it says, Anyone who has joined to Christ is a new being. The old is gone, the new has come. And so listen, choose Jesus. Choose Jesus today, choose Him tomorrow, choose Him the next day. Choose Him. Choose Him as a partner for every single day of your life. And I'll tell you what, if you'll make these choices tonight, and maybe you say, well, I've chosen some of those things, but let's make those five, those five choices a commitment. Say, I'm going to be committed to these choices, making these choices in my life. And if you do, I want to just promise you, guarantee you, that you'll experience the blessing of the Lord in your life like never before. So let's do that together. Let's do that. Let's, uh, let's just make those choices and that commitment and trust the Lord to help us, to protect us, to watch over us, and uh, to walk in the blessing of the Lord. We thank you, Lord, once again for your many blessings to us. And Lord, thank you that you have given us the ability, with your help, to make the choice to follow you and be committed to you in every area of our lives. And so, Lord, I pray uh, tonight that you would help me, that you would help my family, that you would help our dear friends and their families to make good choices, Lord, uh, and be committed to those choices made according to biblical principles and values. And Lord, we'll be grateful for it because we know that tremendous blessing will come into our lives as a result of it. So thank you again, Lord. Thank you so very much. We pray these things in the wonderful name of Jesus. And everyone said, Amen and Amen. Listen, I want to also just uh, let you know about this here. And, and uh, please consider this. In fact, make it a choice. And that is we have a, an all-church prayer and fasting week, June 6th through the 10th, uh, Monday through Friday. We are going to be uh, looking at that for a time of prayer and fasting as a church as a whole. It will be launched on Sunday, the 5th of June, and I have a spe special message I'll be sharing on commission, the Great Commission. And then the theme of our prayer and fasting is recommission, recommission. And so join us for that, if you would. We'll have resources at the church that will help you with your week of prayer and fasting. God bless you, everyone. Have a great rest of the evening and have a good night's rest. Amen.